Go ahead. Okay. Well, as everybody knows, it's it's getting close to really cold weather. First thing I would do is check your high, make sure you got some weight to it. And I see a lot of people posting too much closing up their hives. Give them some ventilation. Um, one about two to three inches ventilation in the bottom. And people that's way up north, they're wrapping their hives. And I think more hives that are wrapped are going to make condensation in there. So you need good ventilation. The next thing I see a lot of people doing is they're really putting out a bunch of pollen. And I think a lot of people is making a bunch of mistakes. I don't feed pollen at any time right now. If you feed pollen, you're going to stimulate the queen. You're going to cause a bad problem. You're going to cause that queen to start laying so much. And when we do get that cold weather, they're going to cluster tight and everything outside that cluster is going to get a chill brood. So you're going to knock populations down twice as fast if you just leave them alone. Bees naturally slow down this time of the year. Especially carnies and Russian bees, they're governed more by pollen coming in. So if you don't feed them a lot of pollen, you're not going to stimulate that queen. And next thing is got hive top feeders on? If your hive has not got any weight on it right now, you better just be feeding honey or at least two to one and only use about a pint to a pint and a half at a time because this fluctuating in the hot and cold weather is going to put a lot of moisture in them hives and you're going to lose hives. Oh, this is coming up pretty soon as Christmas time. We got t-shirts. As far as I know, he just got a bunch of mean. If you need any, get a hold of them. They make good Christmas gifts. And people that's getting a bunch of wax, I got two wax mills. If you decide you want to start making your own foundation, come down. I'll teach you how to run a foundation mill. And if you're students of mine or if you're not students of mine and you're going to sell me bees, I have bought some nukes this year. Um, there's a lot of people don't understand what a nuke should be. If you're selling a nuke, you better have three good frames of sealed brood in there and bees covering all the frames. We went and bought some nukes and I turned out 20% of them that I turned down. The guy thought he had a queen in there. He couldn't find the queen. He had a frame and a half of brood. He had bees covering three frames. I totally rejected it. I'm not gonna buy something and not turn around and be able to sell it. And right now we cannot produce enough bees, enough nukes. And if you want to shake your bees, let me know. Get me a uh, get me an email. Let me know how many you're going to have. I'll gladly come shake bees and your packages, and you can help shake the bees. We can use probably two to three hundred packages per week. We probably could use use our uh, nukes. If you raising more queens or more bees and you can sell, I'll buy all the queens that you can't sell. Now I'm gonna broker them out, so I'm not gonna buy them at one price and sell them at the same price. Nobody's gonna do that. But there's people get seen a beekeeping and first thing they say is, well, I can make bees, but I'm not a salesman. I can't sell bees. You make them, I'll sell them if you can't do it. Now, I don't know if people's having a lot of problems this time of the year, so, Right now, I'm going to start, you know, letting people ask questions that they got. You should be getting ready for spring. That's what I'm doing right now is I'm starting to make more boxes, getting stuff ready, because I'm going gangbusters February, March. And right now, I only got two months to get prepared for that. So who's going to go first with the good questions? Uh, Paul's up for, first. Uh, go ahead, Paul. You got to turn your mic on, Paul. Trying to unmute him here. All right, I got a bad internet connection. Um, can you hear me? All right. Yep, we yeah, hear you. Do um, do hive beetles stay in the hive all year round? Yep. Like mites. Yep. So, yep. Even up north here. Yep. <laughs> They'll go into a suspended state, but they'll be popping out. And that's another thing people don't understand. 
<coughs> you put that pollen in there, you're raising more beetles this time of the year, and then you're going to raise brood. All right. I, I thought in the fall they just left the hive. I didn't know they stayed in there looking around. If you've got a warm day, your best bet is to change out a hive. If you got a double deep or a deep and a medium, and you don't have bees in that second box, you're much better off to pull that box, put a hive top feeder on it, and combine, come, close them down some. Because the taller the box, if they're not occupying that, you're going to get a bunch of heat loss. And if they get toward a point where they start migrating up, they're going to migrate up away from the honey, and they'll starve on you. So that's another point yeah. where the hive top feeder will hold them down in that brood chamber. All right, thanks, Don. Okay. Okay, no other questions. Uh, what's going <laughs> on tonight? Up. Cat got everybody's tongue. <laughs> I see John got his own phone tonight. <laughs> what's going on with you, John? Actually, Philip's got a question here. Okay. Go ahead, Philip. Hey, Don, how you doing? Hey. Um, for a quick question about mouse guards. Um, mm -hmm. I've got mine on, and it's the ones that have like the small holes in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went out and I put some insulation and kind of wrapped up mine for when I'm in Michigan. So mm -hmm. um, got a few dead bees, obviously, in the front. We're going to see that. Do we have to worry about cleaning out those entrances um, during the winter months or just let them carry them out? Well, here's the thing. Bees will carry the dead out if you've got an opening there. When you have a mouse guard, you have a restrictor there. And if the if you happen to have some drones in there and they try to pull them out sideways, the holes will slowly get closed up. Okay. What I used to do when I lived in Ohio is I didn't use what you call a mouse guard. I use rabbit wire and I cut a three inch piece by two inch and I folded it over and I had an opening about three inches wide. And okay. that, when I was in Ohio, I was running 10 frame hive. So three inches on a 10 frame hive with rabbit cloth or rabbit hardware, it's about half inch holes. They seem to can pull it out pretty good. Okay. But if you've got a good hive going in the winter, I don't think a, a mouse guard or even the rabbit wire would be necessary. Okay. Yeah, they were both, they were both pretty strong. And then the one hive that, yeah. that was kind of, I call my nasty hot hive. They, um, I went and put sugar on them, and they and they were coming off the top pretty good. So they really <laughs> took off there in the last month before it started getting cold. So you got to watch where you live. Now, <clears throat> if you're feeding them for an emergency situation rather than feed sugar water, you can take a cup to two cups of dry sugar and drop it in the back of the hive. You know. Okay. That's good. Um, or if you got a, a shim board or a, a super, you can put a uh, hardware cloth <coughs> on top of that, put your newspaper and put your, you know, a five pound bag in there if you got, you know, a big strong hive. But yeah. I always just put a couple cups that way I can go out in a week's time and check it. Because if you get too much in there, they got a bad habit of wanting to drag the stuff out the front and it's all over the front of the yard. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did give, uh, I put about, I don't know, three or four pounds on each one of my bigger hives. Um, I bought a, uh, oh, looks like a medium, mm -hmm. a medium super, and it has vents cut along the, the long way, the lengthwise of it, and then it has hardware cloth in it. So I put newspaper on the top, I cut out a hole in the top of the newspaper, and they were, they were already coming up and checking it out as I was putting it back together. Um, yeah. So I think the ventilation problem is fixed because my lids did have a little bit of mold starting on them or a little bit of black, not black mold, but just discoloration. Well, if you're putting too uh, thin of water, sugar water in there, the moisture is going to, you know, do that to the lids. That's why we went from one vent hole to two vent holes on our, our high top feeders. It okay. helped cut down that mold problem. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is Al. Go ahead, Al. Hi, Don. Hey. Um, I had a situation, you know, I travel a lot, and also it's been really cold in Tennessee. And a few weeks ago, I checked my hive, been about three weeks ago, and I had a really nice marked queen. 
Last Saturday, I checked uh, when it got a little bit warm, and the queen that I had in there then was was not marked. It appeared to be a uh, virgin queen. I checked again today, and it looks like that that maybe it's it's a mated queen. But my question is, at this point, with as cold as it has been, is it possible for queens to still get mated? More than likely not, because you more than likely don't have enough drones. Because I looked at a lot of hives we got out here. And if you find a dozen drones in a hive, you're doing good. And I wouldn't uh, consider that's enough to, to mate a queen. And if you don't recognize the queen, you know, sometimes they change color a little bit. They'll be off a little bit. I've seen hives take and chew the paint off of a, a queen. So I wouldn't hold that as being, you know, a different queen in there. Okay. Well, like I say, she, this one I've got in there now is not marked. Um, and there was... When I checked today, there wasn't any brew, but uh, it appeared like that, you know, she had the appearance of looking like she was mated, but I haven't seen any drones at all. Yeah. I'd be careful this time of the year going in there, going through a high, because if you bump that queen, you know, you're going to be setting yourself back pretty far. Yeah, the only reason I checked it today was the temperature was 63. It's been the first warm day in, in several weeks, so I thought I would check. So. Well, from November 1st to about the middle of January or the first of February, I hardly ever go into a hive. I just lift them up. If they feel like they got some weight, I go on. I stand there on a day that, like today, it got up fairly warm. There's uh, dandelions out there blooming. There's some look white, looks like buttercups blooming. There's some other little bit of stuff blooming. If you see a little bit of pollen coming in, you should be all right because they're gonna bring pollen in. You know, down here, they do it almost 12 months. I've seen it really cold in December, and 10, 11 o'clock, the sun comes out and some of the flowers will start blooming again and they'll start bringing a little pollen. My bees the other day was flying about 41 degrees. Not a lot, but they was flying. I had quite a few flying today because, but it was, it was 63 degrees at one point. Yeah, so. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, no hands up. Uh, actually, Dennis just put his hand up. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, pros, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> pros and cons of using fructose corn syrup versus sugar. Well, we use sugar for a long time, and we start switching over. Strictly time is money. And if, if you buy totes of corn syrup, you can get your cost down to about 18 cents a pound when you break it down because we're buying, uh, it's pretty straight corn syrup and one tote, you add two totes of water to it. So we take it down one third on the tote and then put the rest in water and mix it up that way. Uh, the sugar, we used to buy five to eight tons at a time, but you know, the biggest thing is time. And when you figure time to put, put it into a mixer, mix it up, and then strain out all the, the bad stuff that's in the sugar. Unless you're buying clean sugar, we buy what they call, uh, it's number two sugar, floor sweepings. And there's packets in there from restaurants, earplugs, sometimes welding rods. All that stuff has to be skimmed off. So it slows you down. And we're limited to like mixing 55 gallons at a time. So on a 300 gallon tote, you know, that takes two to three hours right there. Where the tote of corn syrup, uh, it's just faster, you pull up to it, put a pump to it, pump it over, you know, fill it up with water. Now, my experience with, uh, well, they call it batch 55 years ago. And when I was in South George, I didn't feel that the Queens come back or made it or did as well on corn syrup, but They've changed the formula on that corn syrup or the fructose a lot since, you know, 25 years ago. Do you add any other stuff to it? I don't Mineral? try to put, uh, no, uh, we stopped doing that in, in uh, October. We was putting a little bit of tea tree, in, get them ready for going into winter. Now, there's been a big outbreak as far as I, I don't know for a fact, but people's been posting on YouTube, not YouTube, uh, Facebook, about American fowl brood breakout in lower Louisiana. So I don't know if it's just a rumor someone started, but I haven't personally seen it in many, many years. 
Well, I haven't had any here and hope I never do. <laughs> well, I think if you don't buy used equipment, you're pretty good. And there's a lot of people are under the inflow or the, the impression that they feed teramycin or tylosin to bees. My feelings on that is you, why would you cut your foot off to prevent, you know, gangrene if you don't even have gangrene? So right. to put a teramycin or an antibiotic, I think you, you lower the resistance of the bees and you open yourself up for more problems. And I haven't used any kind of antibiotics probably since late uh, middle to late seventies. And when I seen the effects of it, I, I just do without it. And it's just like people this time of the year, you hear them combining hives. If you got one hive, it's bad shape. There's a reason it's bad shape. So combining two hives to make another hive, you're liable to lose both queens. I've seen hives go through the winter down here that no more than the size of a grapefruit or some of them even an orange in a five frame box. You got an eight frame, it's only covering three frames. The smartest thing is pull them out, put them in a five frame box, reduce the entrance down. You have more of a fighting chance. Now see there? Just I got, my ideas. See there, I got a lot more information. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> more for your back, bang for your buck. Huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, right. next up is Ernest. Go ahead, Ernest. I can unmute you. Can you do it on your end? I don't hear it over here. How there about now? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Don, and we hear you now. Okay, and good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, yeah, I had a question. Uh, I want to do auxilic acid uh, treatment one more time uh, while there's no brood, and uh, uh, if it. If they're flying, are they out of the cluster, or should I wait to get up in the 50s before I do it? Yeah. I usually say when the bees are flying, you can do it, but where you're at, your temperatures is a lot different. I wouldn't try to do it until you probably have 55 or 60 degrees, and then I would be careful when you do it. You should have done them already. You should have got them already. Well, I have did them, but... That that those uh, ones that go to the other hives and robs them out, uh, they end up bringing uh, mites back in. For people well, if you that treated them, them, they wouldn't have no mites to bring back. What's that? If you treated all your hives, they shouldn't have no mites they're carrying back. Yeah, but they'll go for miles uh, to rob a hive out. My neighbors has got bees. Well, as long as they take the mites to him and leave them over there, you're in good shape. <laughs> you can try it, but be careful. Okay. I guess all I have now. Okay. Okay, next up is John. Go ahead, John. I see Anthony's feeling better. No, he didn't feel good. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, I'm I'm still working on this. First of all, I mean, hello, Ernest. I'd be down to your place tonight, but I have a little bit of sore throat, and being so close to Thanksgiving, I didn't want to share any flu bugs with you, so I uh, have my own little spot here tonight. A uh, question I have. Um, I had uh, purchased a queen from uh, Joe May. Uh, he had a mated queen for me, and let me tell you, he provided excellent service as far as getting the, the bee to me quickly. Unfortunately, the U.S. Postal Service kind of lost it, and their idea of expedited shipping was about six days, I think, when they finally arrived. So she arrived live, and I put a little bit of honey on her, but unfortunately, I had to leave to go to Illinois for eight days. So uh, it was very cold that morning. I just made the decision, just put her in the, in the hive quickly and let, her, let them release her by eating out the, the candy. Well, I came back the day before yesterday, and they had eaten three-quarters of the way through, but hadn't quite opened, released her. Most of the uh, bees inside were dead, uh, except for the queen. Uh, the, and you mean in, the bees was dead in the cage or yeah, the, the, uh, the attendants were that were shipped. Oh, that's that's normal a lot that's of times. Typical, yeah. No, and 
So today <laughs> they still had beaten through and we, we have about five inches of snow on the ground up here. So I went in real quick. I opened up the cage and just took, took the screen off and closed it up real quick. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they'll, if they haven't killed her or she hasn't froze by now, they must be doing something except that her somehow. The only thing you do is hope now. I mean, you, there's yeah. not not much uh, point going in there and going through because you might not see eggs if you got cold weather up there. Yeah, I'm hoping that to go in tomorrow and maybe Mondays or a warmer two days and throw some fondant up on the frames and get all the hives uh, fed at least tomorrow and Monday. So yeah, I wasn't going to bother going in and trying to open up the frames. I figured what was going to happen is going to happen at this point. You can just hope um, for the good, you know, that's all you can do. Yeah. And the other question I have is last time you talked about uh, a co-op, have you given more thought to that or have you come I can't up with get enough people who want to, uh, to try to participate in that. So mm -hmm. I've been just kind of getting stuff lined up where I can buy bees from other people because there's mm -hmm. no way I'm going to make enough bees. I'm already getting orders and we normally don't start taking our orders until February. But there's such a shortage, I'm already got the first two loads almost booked out already. Okay. All right. Well, so if you've got extra bees, you let me know. <laughs> I, I hope so. If I have extra bees, by the time I get through this winter, I'm hoping to try to make it to 100 hives uh, this summer. So, But if I have extra, I'll certainly know who to call. Okay. So that's all I have. Thank you for okay. now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next up is Big Washes. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Don, uh, great to be part of the chats here. Uh, I'm just planning on getting started in the spring. So this is all okay. new to me. And there's I've watched all your videos, ordered the DVDs, watched those out. And, and my big question that I, I just haven't seemed to find anywhere is what's the difference between a breeder and a production hive? A breeder queen normally is a queen that's been artificially inseminated and you can almost guarantee the race, the lineage of the bee. And I sell production queens that I, I classify them as breeders, but I will show you that they're laying wall to wall and there's hardly any spaces where there's not eggs or sealed brood. That's how I define one other than AI artificially inseminated ones. I wouldn't suggest buying AI queens until you've been in raising bees for at least three years, four years, because more than luck, you're going to get in there and a $200, $350 queen and you bump one, you know, it's, it's a big loss. Or I had a student years ago, I actually picked a frame up and wasn't paying attention and dropped the queen. And I was standing there watching him and before I could open my mouth, he's one step forward, he stepped on the queen and you know, you, you can't do nothing. That's, that's the stuff you have to put up with when you teach. You you put your stuff out there and it's for everybody to play with. So that's where they learn them. You just gotta get used to it. But I would work production queens and learn learn all the different systems of the beekeeping first. And if you were if you were gonna get into this to try and get to a commercial level in say two years, how many nukes or packages do you need to start out with that first year? Well, you can do a few and build up, but you know, one thing, you can buy bees, you can buy nukes. There's one thing out there, don't have a price tag on, is time. And you only have so many months to build, get ready, and start selling before the next year rolls around. So if you can afford it, start out with 50 or 100 packages. And if you're an experienced beekeeper, you can take that 100 packages and split them nukes out and go to 500 probably within six, eight weeks. Main thing is build boxes. You're not going to build enough boxes the first year or two. Right. Okay. You know, if you're going to get into commercial beekeeping, take classes. If you too far from me, watch the videos. Uh, find your someone in a local bee club. Work with them. Get ideas from different people. Get your web page up. Bees will pretty much sell themselves. Try to keep your overhead down. Well, I'm definitely planning on coming down to take your class. That's not even a question at this point. That's that's something I definitely want to do. I'm just trying to get the logistics figured out and, and trying to find my property right now. 
Well, you know, you don't have to buy property to have a commercial operation. There's many outlets where you can put bees on. And I don't know where you live, but, you know, check on uh, organic farms. They might want five or ten hives and let them pay you to have them sit there year round. I mean, that's one way to do it. But if you're going to go commercial, I try to keep minimum of 25 hives to, to make a move. Because take a few hives here and there, you spend too much time on the road, and then wherever you're going to put them, the man wants to come and talk to you. So, you know, that could be an hour, two hours wasted time right there. So if you're running five yards, you know, five or ten miles apart, you could spend more time in one day on the road, you know, servicing different bee yards. So that's another reason I try to keep 25 hives as a minimum. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next up is Bruce. Good evening. Good evening. Don, first of all, thanks for being there. I really appreciate you giving your resources to us. Uh, it hit 27 degrees down here in Central Texas Wednesday. Today it was 70 degrees. We were working outside all day. Mm -hmm. And there's bees flying everywhere today. So I, I guess one, one night at 28 degrees, doesn't really slow them down if it gets warm even in the november for one day well, they start flying around again they'll go out <laughs> but you know they might not be working a lot of stuff out there depending on where you live uh their bees are just like people they're cooped up for a day or two they got to get out and relieve themselves so sometimes you see a lot of activity in front of a hive and a lot of people think oh they're robbing or you know they're really working. Sometimes you're just going out taking care of business. So keep an eye on your hive and watch what's going on. You mentioned organic farm. My wife and I run an organic farm here in mm -hmm. Central Texas. And in the three years that I've been uh, working with the bees on our property, I have noticed a big difference in the amount of flowers that we have around on the, on the highway and on our property. And, and even the vegetables, uh, cucumbers, they, they sure get uh, pollinated so much better now and, and, and I agree that that's a good marketing to uh, uh, organic farmers right uh, if they're not using bees already uh, I met uh, called Jason in Cleveland this week fine mm -hmm. gentleman uh, just talked my ear off and got me so dizzy because I got <laughs> so much knowledge from him in 20 minutes uh, we're working together now um, you mentioned, I heard the other day, you said, uh, making foundation, take two small cell plastic sheets and put your new wax in between it and use a rolling pin and roll it back and forth. That sounds like a good starter process for uh, somebody that can't afford a, uh, a, uh, a, a mill yet. Well, it all depends on how you want to look at it. You can buy a dozen mills for the cost of the time it's going to take you to play around and do that. I mean, you know, I put a lot of stuff out there that people, it's good information. It's probably a good idea for someone who's got four or five hives that don't want to buy foundation or keep things organic and use their own foundation. But you already have the idea you want to make a living at this. So for the time it takes you to do a dozen, two dozen, you can crank out several hundred on a wax mill. And you know, people will come buy that wax from you. I try not to sell mine and I get $2 a sheet as fast as somebody wants to buy it. So there's another option. Now people don't think about it. And I have sold two mills already in the past 12 years to non beekeepers. I had a lady come up one time, her and her friend bought one and they make candles. And they was buying foundation and putting them on a 45, rolling them up, putting a wick in there, and hand-rolled candles. And she'd come back, and, and I taught her how to run that machine. She said she paid for the machine less than 90 days. So there's a market out there. And if you're going to do the organic farm, put your little sign up there. We sell organic bees. And you'd be surprised how many people come there will buy a hive or two. I, I'm really not worried about selling bees here in Texas. We, we, we're all used to working with our bee suits on, and, and uh, I, I just can't wait to get some, uh, some planned packages in the spring. And well, you see, if you talk to Jim, he'll tell you right out. And, uh, you know, Ron's over there and Kelly's over there. 
And Chris is up in the northern part. I've got four or five students in Texas, and they'll tell you. A lot of times they work them in a T-shirt. I mean, you know, that's what I try to tell. You don't have to buy bees from me. You know, don't get me wrong. You're buying bees from me and then reselling them, you have a selling tool. Plus, you know, I mean, they're, they're gentle bees. So know who you're buying bees from. You know, there's a lot of people say buy local. Well, in your situation, you buy hot bees right around the corner. <laughs> Ain't nobody wants hot bees. But don't be afraid to put a price on them. You know, there's a good markup. Oh, in yeah. I, that, that's right. I'm glad I'm in Texas right now. <laughs> Packages, oh, yeah. I think, are selling for 165 out there, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Come and get you 100 or 200. Okay, next up is Dennis. Go ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead Dennis. Did you ever catch your thieves? Not yet. I keep my gun loaded. <laughs> Don't blame you there. Um, I'm primarily going to be trying to raise some queens. Uh, how many do you suppose you ought to keep in your yard? I'd like to keep a bunch of them at my house. I'll have to diversify and keep the farmers from killing all of them at one time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, well, how many do you keep at your house? Well, I try to keep 100 to 200 here, but... You know, it seems like a lot, but a lot of people will come and buy 10 or 20. A lot of people buy 25 at a time. Now, buy, getting orders of 100 at a time is no problem at all. So, you know, it depends on how many you can do. I'm kind of stretched out to the point here. I'm doing classes. So in the springtime, I got a lot of new beekeepers coming in that don't know which end of the hive tool to use. So, you know, you're teaching them such basic stuff that, you know, it's hard to do a lot. <laughs> so well, run as many boxes you can run well i got six acres i can run here and i know i'll have to feed i've been doing that anyway taking care of them but <clears throat> what you can oh. do is put five gallon buckets get you some 55 gallon barrels and use the lids and put them on cement blocks and level them up and we've done it for several years and probably we do it every year again we've been using buckets out there plus a bird bath and i got a line feeder with a drip line in it but you can put three buckets, stack them up like a drinking fountain. I've got videos of me doing it out there. I mean, you're going to lose a percentage of that sugar water to bees out in the field, but time is money. I mean, you can buy sugar, you know, a lot cheaper than you can buy your time. Other than some possibility, there's some still wild bees around here. I, I mm -hmm. doubt it. I'm about 10 miles away from the nearest beekeeper, so I'm pretty isolated. I kind of yeah. like it that way. But... Um, or something else. Oh, if you don't mind, I'll come down a couple of days ahead of my packages and help you out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, you can, I can pick your brains a little bit. There ain't a whole lot up there to pick. <laughs> well, I'll try to get what I can. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, sir. Okay. Okay. Next up is Joe. Go ahead, Joe. I've been trying to hold off orders till January it ain't happened they just keep picking me to death so I got orders open so if anybody they I'll fill up quick so if you want Queens Nutri packages you need to let me know pretty quick littlebitshoneybees.com they won't uh, you like Don I'll be filled up pretty quick <laughs> you can only do you know you can only do but so much that's why the you know the main question people come here and ask is why do you want to teach somebody to put you out of business it ain't happened it won't happen if I ta taught 100 commercial beekeepers in the state of Georgia every single month, the market is growing so fast that nobody can produce that many bees to put you out of business. I mean, you know, that's one thing people worry about. But there's no market. The market's out there. I've got students a year, two years, and they sell out. Yeah. The longer you're in it, the more, you know, you're going to sell. I uh, approached by a commercial honey, honey producer. One six thousand queen. I said, "You're talking the wrong man." Yeah. See, you're. <laughs> if you know, most people start out like me. I try to keep my orders, you know, small, and do more of small orders. That way, you have more happier people. You get a commercial person in there once a hundred, two hundred at a time. It wipes your your amount you have out there. So, you got your local people that you've been dealing with for years, and when they call, you say, hey, "You ain't got no bees with all in boxes. You ain't got no queens." So. 
it's an endless situation. Yeah, it is. That's all I got, Don. Okay. Okay, no other hands up. Well, Any questions? I see puzzled looks on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to have a question. Here you go. Philip just raised his head. Go ahead, Philip. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the one that had that puzzled look. Um, <laughs> so, so what's the the process, Don? That to like come down to your classes? Do we get it to send an email to you? You could come here, and if you want to take one day class, I charge a hundred dollars a day, or I charge okay. five hundred for the year. Monday through Saturday, and you can come as much as you want. If you don't learn enough in one year, come back the next year. I ain't going to charge you again. I mean, okay. you're going to work when you're here because the more you work, you know, you're going to learn how to work highs faster and, and more efficiently. Right. Oh, no. I just didn't know the process, like, to let you know. Do you, like, get hold of you ahead of time say hey i'm coming down or this yeah, man. that's that's the best thing because i have to run some other yards too and okay. sometimes if i don't have somebody coming in from out of state i try to tell people if you're coming very far call me let me know you're coming and that yeah. way I'm, i make sure i'm here because sometimes i have to go buy sugar or syrup or go get stuff you know stuff like that okay. but if you're going to make a living at this or or get into it to where you can make a living Think about doing you a web page. Think about what you want to put on it. If you can't do it, he can do it for you. Or, you know, there's people all around can do it. He takes care of my web stuff for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Get your price out there. And there's, I wouldn't suggest anybody cutting prices because right now I look at orders out there, people cutting prices. They either nobody knows them or they got something you can't work. Right. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, it might be a, a year or two yet, but I'm going to, I'll be going into my second year. I just want to get these through, and then I'm hopefully I want to get up to about 20 hives this spring. So How many I, you have now? I got three. Well, you could take make take those three and split out and make 25 real fast the first thing in spring. Okay, yeah. If no, you're going to make money at beekeeping, believe me, you have to take a chance. There's no, you know, sit back and everything's going to be for sure. If you don't take a chance, you're not making money. Yeah. And if well, you're not I, splitting, you know, you're not going to grow. Well, I, I plan on splitting the spring right now. Like you said, though, the biggest thing is getting the boxes and yeah. get your box. Now, now I, I do you recommend, I thought about this ordering a couple packages anyway, just in case, because <laughs> I mean, I can't afford to lose 80% of three. So I thought about <laughs> ordering a couple packages <laughs> just in case, but um, is that what usually people do to start out with? You just, uh, just in case packages well i mean <laughs> if you've been in a couple of years you pretty much got some routine down you, you're not completely killing them so unless they swarm out what are you running eight frame stuff 10 frame no this is this is my end of my first year and i'm running 10 frame okay well see in the springtime you could take that 10 frame and if you want to be more of a sure thing buy you three queens and you could split each one you know make two splits off of each 10 frame that would be, you know, real strong hives. Oh, yeah, that's good. Idea. If you want to gamble, you could take make nine splits off each of those. But okay. you have to have queen cells or cut the cells. You know, okay. If there's any beekeepers close to you that are grafting, find out if they'll sell you some queen cells. Okay, yeah. I mean, there, there's lots of ways to do this. Yeah, that sounds like a better way than what I was thinking than buying packages. Because yeah. they're pretty strong. I'm hoping they make it through, but uh, no guarantees. But uh, they look pretty strong so far going in. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Don. Okay. Okay, next up is Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Well, Don, talking about splits, I want to take my uh, double deeps and split them in the spring. Okay. And double my uh, and double my hives up. But I'm, I'm, if I order queens from you, how early should I make those splits up here in the north? I think I would probably wait until the 1st of April because where you're at, you could have, you know, cold weather in the middle of April. You never know. I mean, so you think you, you think I should wait until the fruit bloom or should I do it before the fruit bloom? Do you want to make a bunch of hives or do you want to make honey? <laughs> well, I want to take, I want to, I want to, um, I just want to split my double, uh, 
my double deeps up. Well, if you split them with I mean, made I, queen, I, I, you know, you're still got the hive sitting there. You're still going to have some honey coming in. Well, no, I, I have my production hives, but I would like to take some of my other hives and split them. But I don't know if I should just automate it queens or just take some frames out and do walk-away splits and, and do it that way. Well, you do a walk-away split, you're looking at five weeks before you see anything. You're going to the minute know, yeah. walk away, minimum, 16 days, another week. And if you got bad weather, it could be 10 days before you got a queen out mating. Then from that point, another 21 days before you see a replacement of brood. So there you go, yeah. time versus money. Well, that's what I was thinking. I think I would just do my splits in the spring with mated queens and then wait yeah. until, uh, you know, wait until the end of spring and then do my walk away splits because then, you know, they can do what they want. Well, if you put mated queens in there, you're going to start having eggs in three to four days, five days, probably at the latest, you know, so, yeah. you know, you could put a frame of brood in there that's hatching and, and some open brood and, Frame of pollen, I mean, you got a good boost right there. Yeah. No, because I'm sure I'm going to have some dead outs, so. Well, you but shouldn't that's have any thing. dead outs. If you treated them before, you know, the winter comes in, you know, the, the worst thing is going to be starvation. So if you got plenty of hive on them bees or high, honey in those hives, you shouldn't be, you know, starvation. Mites is not going to be the biggest problem because mites are the – small high beetles and stuff in the mites that stuff pretty much tapers off by the middle of, of november to the end of november yeah no i i well like i said i'm running double deeps and i left them a full a full medium super honey on there so mm -hmm. they're pretty well stocked up yeah i mean they were strong hives make sure that you have all your queen excluders off of all these hives That's yeah they're all off for get to pull them and if you got a super honey up there, the bees will move up. And if the queen can't get through that queen excluder, the hive will die. Yeah. The numbers just start dropping off fast. Some people don't think about it. Yeah. No, I took them all off. Okay. All right. Thanks, Don. Okay. Okay, Joe. Yeah, Don, I get a lot of questions asked from guys wanting to be commercial guys how many hives you can run i consider myself pretty much a workaholic <laughs> it's and a lot I, of work i can run 250 big hives and 460 two frame mating boxes that's about it for one guy and that that's 10 hours a day seven days a week and that's not answering the phone and not having drop by droppings on you and not going to post office <laughs> <laughs> that's that takes time there yeah but just gotta get an idea so if you're not a workaholic, you're going to have to do less than that. Yeah. yeah. So that's all I got. Okay, Steve, you're up. Hey, Don, I got a question for you. Okay. Um, I'm looking to take – I've got 13 hides now. I want to go to 25 next year. And I've got some vacation coming up. Uh, looking forward to coming seeing you. But I'm in Houston, so should I purchase from – your students here in Texas somewhere or take the chance of shipping bees down from you to here? I think I would get from one of my students out there because, you know, when they leave here, they're in good shape. They might right. hit five trucks between here and where you live. Right. And if you're buying them from a student, I've got several coming over in March, pick up bees. So get a hold of one of them, buy a package. You're going to have to pay them a little bit. Uh, Postage probably would run twenty to twenty-five dollars per a package. So, between you and the student, get together. We can give them something for bringing them over, and I'm sure they'll be in much better condition than the post office. You know, trucking them over there would be. Right. Uh, do you have a list somewhere of students? Where? Do you have a list on your website somewhere? Yes, of... on my web page, there should be a list of my students. Okay, great. Thanks, sir. Okay. And Dennis need to uh, get a hold of uh, E and tell him that you bought some bees and that you paid for classes and let him get all that information on there, whether you're going to sell bees or not. So if you're one of my students and you haven't got a hold of my web guy, be sure you do that. I would rather you get a hold of him directly than to give me the information and I try to pass it on to him and there might be something in translation lost. 
But 13 hives, you should be able to go to at least 50, you know, no problem. The first, the first go at it. That's, I'm, I'm, I'd love to get to 50. It's only a thing. Make your <laughs> mind up. That's what you want to do. Get the boxes. That ain't a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm building as fast as I can. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Okay. Okay. Next up is John. Uh, Get your mic on. Here. Okay, I think I'm up. Yep, there there you go. Go. This weekend when I was in Illinois, I happened to be sitting across from a gentleman and started talking about bees, so I slid a little <laughs> closer trying to get some information. And here he's really into the pollination. He goes out for the almond industry. Mm -hmm. He takes the trucks out. Then he goes up for the pumpkin season in northern uh, Illinois. And he says he moves around about 1,000 hives. Mm -hmm. that, is that where you need to be to to really generate a good income from a pollinating business? Well, that depends what you consider a good income. Mm -hmm. Did he tell you how much he gets a hive for pollinating? No, he didn't. And that's one of the questions I was going to ask. But since we had a family wedding, I didn't want to you know, right. step on anybody's toes. But what is what do they get a hive when they take it? I have heard the last between 180 and 200 a hive. Okay. But here's the thing they're not telling you. There's an inspector when you go into California. And if you took, say, 100 hives, the inspector's going through all them hives. If it doesn't meet the quota, you take two hives, it becomes one hive. Okay. Okay. okay? They don't tell you that. Next thing they don't tell you is you've got to have a broker. You have to pay that broker to take care of your bees. Uh, Greg Stallman is up there in uh, North Carol uh, North Dakota, and if you get a chance, look at him. He's on Facebook, and okay. he'll tell you he took two tractor trailer loads of bees out there about three years ago. They had a big rain thing, and the bees sat on the truck for four days because it was mm -hmm. mugged down. He had to pay someone to feed those bees. Mm -hmm. By the time he got his money and pulled the bees back, he only brought one load back and i said what'd you do with the equipment he says i left it because it costs more to haul it back than i can build it for mm. all right so let's say they pay two hundred dollars or 250 250 is a good high number let's say you get 250 i stay here in my bee yard i sell five frames of bees out of a nuke for 175 i got no transportation cost i got no broker to pay and out of that same box, I'll put bees back in it, and I sell it four times a month. Okay. So you don't have all that thing, you know, but if you're going to pollinate, pollinate within 50 to 200 miles of your place, and you do the hauling, and you do your contract. Okay. And like I say, you know, if you're going to do it, about 25 hives is minimum. Okay. And when you first start out, you know, there's people that will do it for less than 50 bucks. I mean, you have to figure out what you want. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a place to put bees, it's a good location, good organic farm, nothing else in the way. Mm -hmm. So you might do it for 50 or $55 and leave it as a permanent location year round. But you need to tell the person, you're not giving them the honey for that. Mm -hmm. You still get your fee. Okay. All right. So the other thing I learned was interesting is that if your bee – during the pollination season, let's say it's a week long or two week long, these are where they're pollinating. If your boxes die, you don't get paid for those boxes. You were, you if know, so not, if it's not what? If your bees die, let's say you put your you put them out there, they pass the inspector, and they die in the first week, you don't get paid for that hive for that season. It has to run the complete gamut from start to finish. Well. So, if they spray a fungicide on those trees, if they spray an herbicide, you know, your bees mm -hmm. don't make it. And that's not their problem. Mm -hmm. You didn't fulfill your contract. I know. So, so maybe leave it up to It's not gold that people tell you. Yeah. You know, I've been doing bees since 52, and I've been commercial in the, since the early 70s. The glitter of pollinating on large scales does not appeal to me. Okay. Honey don't appeal to me. It slows me down. I mean, there is people that make money with honey, but for the amount of uh, the effort and everything in making honey, the money is in queens and nukes, believe me. Yeah. Well, 
I'm learning that you need to be able to produce your own queens to even grow your hive substantially because, you know, during the season you find yourself out without a queen and nobody around you has queens. When you need a queen, they need queens. And right. you know, that's, I think it's really important to be able to raise Well, your I've got enough videos on even without grafting. I mean, you could get hives to make queen cells as long as you're running wood and wax. You can cut cells, a five frame box, five frames in there, two frames out of the five frame box. You could have 10 cells in each one. I mean, that's 20 splits you'd make. If you run in plastic, then do the queen castles. That's why, you know, they're divided that way. You drop one frame in there. And when if you've got your time down and you can recognize when they're coming out, you put them in one day, go back and check. First queen out. If you've got other queens in there, move it to another queen castle. Mm -hmm. Leave the field bees there. I mean, there's ways to do everything. But to make money, you need to graft on a scale of a couple hundred a day. Yeah. My granddaughter's coming over this spring to help me between my granddaughter and Stephen and, and my son-in-law. We are going to try to do, you know, better than a thousand a week. Hopefully we can keep our boxes full and we haven't been able yet. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully my neighbor, he's becoming quite adept at uh, grafting. Maybe one day he'll take me under his shoulder and, uh, well, I mean, it's not hard. I mean, get you a magnifying glass, uh, go over there and watch them, play around with it. If you put, get a medium frame and if you put, you know, 30 cells on it, if you get two to hatch out or come out of, you learned how to do it. Mm -hmm. It's like people, you know, come over here and they want to learn grafting and you put them back there and they try to do 90 cells on a frame. Mm -hmm. So they never done it before. So the time lapsed from the first graft to the, when they finish too long a graph, so they're starting to dry out, so they don't get as high a number, but they get three or four, and they'll say, well, you didn't teach me. It's like teaching how to ride a bicycle. I can show you how to get on there, how to do it, but if you fall off a few times, you learn. If you turn one cell out and the queen hatches, then you've learned how to graft, right? The That's next true. thing is you practice what you learn until you get, you know, there's nobody going to get 100% all the time. I mean, springtime, you can get 85, 95%, but, you know, as the season goes on, you get sloppy and not pay attention. Temperature's too hot, too cold. You know, there's a lot of things coming to play. That's for sure. Well, thank you again. That's all I have right now. Okay, thank you. okay next up is Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, yeah, and, uh, for uh, Steve, uh, I just caught you're in Houston. Uh, <laughs> You might look up there that the, all those pick your own farms just uh, north of um, Houston there in Montgomery County that uh, I was up there last year. And I didn't see any beehives and, and they it might be because uh, they have a lot of customers coming through picking their own fruit. But uh, that may be an opportunity for uh, uh, pollination. Uh, also, I mentioned that there's two people. Uh, uh, Jim is uh, over in Wimberley and a good gentleman is also going to get some some packages from uh, Don soon, uh, and I've hooked up with him to get some packages. And uh, I, I mentioned uh, 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 Jason, but it's Kelly Jordan You're over right. in Cleveland, just north of Houston. Mm -hmm. Another fine gentleman, talked my ear off. He's also <laughs> working with Don to get some packages. Um, so, uh, Steve, let's get the empire going here in Texas. <laughs> It's out there. All you have to do, uh, get on your web page, and you'll be surprised if you post on there, you have got my bees, and you're running my stock, they'll sell themselves. But, you know, you can buy bees from anybody. I mean, you got weavers out there selling bees. They usually sell out pretty quick, but, you know, you just have to get what you can afford and what you want to put into it. Don, what do you have to say about uh I wouldn't tell people that I'm selling your bees unless I've come and taken your commercial class. Is that correct? That's, that's the best no. way to do it. Well, it, you're going to learn. I mean, Joe pretty much knew my whole operation and how to do stuff. He come down and, you know, the second day he said, man, I learned a lot just on the second day. So you're going to pick stuff up. The main thing is buy the stock, you know, but you can buy stock from anybody. There's a lot of people sell bees. Uh, people that buy my bees seem to sell them faster than anybody else. And, you know, when you, you see Jim out there, he's working, I mean, a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. I mean, no bee veil. 
And before he started getting my nukes and stuff, he started buying my bees about four or five years ago. He used to work two bee suits over there in Wimberley. He said they would eat them up. So there's things to consider. Okay, no other questions? Everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat. They're just waiting to talk. <laughs> I was going to say, give Don, an, give Don an hour down there and he'll tell you what you're doing wrong. <laughs> well, it's, it's not that. I mean, I pick up things the way people open the box, the way they hold their, their hive to it. You know, there's a lot of things from doing bees in your backyard than to do things. Each movement is supposed to save you some time. And I'm sure Joe can tell you the same thing. I mean, you approach making money at this totally different than you do with a few highs behind your house. Hey, uh, Dennis, go ahead. Well, Ben's no one else is talking, I'll jump in. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just going to say one thing. Up here, you have commercial outfits, and if it hadn't, oh, about 20 years ago, a couple of them took me under wing and kind of taught me a few things. But I'll say this I've talked to several of your boys, and they don't seem to be any jealousy, animosity between them all. They've all been a good help. So you're putting out some of them that means well and try to help folks. Well, there's, you know, there's enough business for everybody out there and there's no need to cut. I send people customers. Right? I'd rather sell your bees than sell mine. Cause when I sell mine, I don't have no bees to sell anymore. So, <laughs> I mean, it's endless circle. I'll just let you know. So far, unless there's a dud out there I don't know about, they're all pretty friendly, and they will talk your leg off, yeah. give you all the advice you want. <laughs> it's it's best to you know talk to different students. I mean, they'll tell you things without worrying about me looking over their shoulder. When you talk to them on the phone, you know they'll tell you, "Well, this guy's a jerk." You know, don't listen to this, or you know, he'll tell you the right way. I mean, I'm trying to put out uh, good students and I try to teach them, you know, if the product don't look good to you and you wouldn't buy it, then don't sell it to somebody else. And that's half the success of my students do good product and you don't have a problem. I just let you know so far, they've been a good help up here. <laughs> they wouldn't give you a piece of advice. I guess they're afraid you're going to beat them out. I had, I had a couple of them that kind of took me under wing years ago, but that's a rarity. The rest of them don't give you the time of day, but. Your boys seem to be pretty good. Well, I'm hoping to build up a, a, a network from one coast to the next where they'll help other people get into it. I mean, it's just one thing helps another, you know, right along the line. All righty. I just wanted to tell you that. Okay, next up is Anthony. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Well, today we're going to try some one arm beekeeping because uh, – I haven't been in my hives since probably a week before the accident. So it's been probably four or five weeks since I've been in there. And I got to go back in the hospital tomorrow for another surgery that's going to lay me up. So uh, between my wife and my, my wife is fine with the bees. And then I got my maid coming over to do any lifting. So between my maid and my wife, I'm going to try to get through the hives this morning. And, uh, just make sure there's nothing grossly out of whack. Um, and then I'm going to have to put them on remote control for probably another, another month. Because they, they made two cuts here in my arm when they put in the stainless steel plate and the screws. But the screws in the top came out because the bone was broken in so many pieces. So now they're going to go in and take all of that out and put in a complete shoulder joint, complete new shoulder joint. So they're going to split me from the shoulder to the elbow. So I'm going to try to get done what I can today. Shouldn't be a big deal. Just want to make sure there's wax moths haven't taken over or there's any mess in there. And then uh, they're just going to have to be on their own for at least another month. After well, let, let somebody help you. You know, it's cheaper to buy more bees to than to tear your body up. I made that mistake, you know, probably eight or nine years ago. I had a uh, an umbilical mesh pudding, and I was not supposed to do no lifting. And, and when you're a beekeeper, you've got to make a living. So 
I went out there and lift it and it popped that mesh. So I had it went back the second time and now it's, you know, got to be done again. So, but it's hard to have, you know, hives and not work them. I mean, but have somebody out there and stand there and give them directions what to do. And that's all you can do. Did you yeah, get that, your bill straightened out? That scared me. I seen that bill for a million dollars. That's Thai bot, not dollars. So, no, well, you know, I was supposed to go in a hospital about a week ago, and and uh, I didn't go because I was afraid they was going to do that to me. Yeah, well, unfortunately, this is going to probably cost me at least twenty thousand dollars out of my pocket. Ooh. Um, was eleven thousand for the first surgery, and this one's going to be about the same. And uh, it's the proverbial "you can't get blood out of a stone." You know, this the, the lady that pulled in front of me. She sells food and stuff at a little booth in a farmer's market. You know, she ain't got no money, so fortunately, I have the money to do it. I just didn't want to spend it in this way. But it is what it is, you know. So yeah, right. The maid's going to come and she'll lift the box so if anything got to be lifted. And I'm just planning on using uh, one of those frame grabber tools, you know. Yeah. I got a broken rib on the left side and the shoulder's so good on the right side. So, well, uh, take it easy, Anthony. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think it's near the end. So thank you very much. And, okay. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you. Nobody else got questions? Uh, two hands just went down. Uh, Anthony Dennis, got, go Anthony got an answer question there. Anthony, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Anthony? Yes. All right, I've been trying to get some maids around here. How do you get that worked out? My wife won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very lucky that... Uh, <laughs> we have a good one, you know, and, and you know what's crazy here? The going rate is 300 baht a day. If I give them 300 in Thai money a day, they're very happy. It's crazy. <laughs> 300 baht is less than $10. <laughs> and and uh, so I, always, I give mine 600 baht a day. Plus, I take care of her like she was my daughter. I take care of both her and her son like they were family. So it works out good for both of us. I lived up near Chiang Mai. You had any dog yet? That's pretty good well, eating. <laughs> Tides don't eat dog. Tides don't eat dog. I was, up in the, dog. I was up in the Aka and Lassu tribes. They like them. <laughs> I live uh, – I live 24 kilometers north of Chiang Mai. I'm on the way to Chiang Rai. Okay. All right. I'm just messing with you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> if you're ever in the neighborhood, stop by and visit. Jeff Freeland <laughs> did. Jeff and his wife were here visiting in Thailand, and they came and met us, and we went to dinner and stuff a few times. And nice to meet people. Yeah. If you're ever in Chiang Mai, by all means, come to the house. Let's have dinner or something, whatever. All righty. <laughs> All righty, man. You guys have a good two weeks. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, last up here is Philip. Go ahead, Philip. Hey, then one last thing. <clears throat> um, is there anybody uh, close to Michigan or in Michigan that has your bees? Uh, Joe May and Matt Fierno, Indy Bees, there's two there. Uh, Willie okay. is up in Chicago, north of Chicago. And I don't know if he's, I think he's still selling bees. Okay. All right. I'll try and look them up then. But I'm think. sure, you know, if you get a hold of Joe up there or get a hold of Matt, they're, they're, they pretty much got a lot of bees all the time. Yeah. I'll try and get a hold of Joe. Okay. I've, I've emailed him before. Thanks. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. Nine o'clock. Henry had his hand up. You still got your question, Henry? Oh, let me unmute him. Okay. Um, you mentioned before about plastic frames and uh, the small cell. Right. I, can't, I can't find them. Uh, the small cell uh, plastic? Right. Uh, how many do you want to get? Well, I, that's, I just want to uh, – ten. I just want to do uh, – I want to make strips out of them. Oh, oh, well, if you do now, you're going to have to use a plywood blade 
because uh, my son done that with some plastic on minis for you know stability. Uh -huh. But now, if you're going to buy a large amount, like a pallet full, acorn uh, foundations out of California, we usually buy a pallet at a time from them. Now, they got the plastic, it's uh, the black plastic, and you get the regular spray uh, waxed on there, or you get the heavy spray. We just get the regular spray. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, this, what would you say, an inch and a half? Uh, yeah, you could cut almost a two inch on those because they're eight and a half, and you can get four cuts on them. Okay. Okay, so it just depends on the, the length of them then. Uh, yeah, right. get deeps. Deeps are your best buy because the mediums, you're only going to get three on that. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. No other hands up. So. Nobody else have a question? We're going to wrap up then. Uh, Bruce has, Bruce has one more here. Uh, I'm I'm convinced. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy Georgia bees and Georgia queens and <laughs> build up nukes down here in Texas and and teach people how to take their suits off. Because well, well, anybody you know, working bees in Texas, they they use bee suits. <laughs> Jim come here, you know, before when he got before he got built up good, he bought a whole bunch of nukes from us. And we got them ready for him, and he come and just picked them up with a trailer. I mean, that's one way. The cheapest way is buy the packages and put them in nukes over there. I, mean, I might even try to to split a couple of uh, packages this spring just to just to see see if I can do it because I've I've got plenty of honey and brood in my uh, my ten frame hives. Mm -hmm. You know, just just try a few couple of them. Well, the packages all come with a queen. You can buy extra queens. Uh, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat in commercial beekeeping. Uh, <clears throat> you can take a two-pound uh, two package and take a five-frame nuke and put a divider in the middle, two frames on each side, put a queen on one side that comes in a package and put the queen, the extra queen on the other side and then set you an empty five-frame medium over the top and dump that two pound package in there and just spray them a little bit with sugar water and then take your hive to it, just kind of move them back and forth and they'll divide themselves half on one side, half on the other side. I know telling you that's cutting my throat because you take a package and make them twice as far, but you know, that's what I'm here to do to show you how to make some splits that way. I mean, that's the quickest way and no one probably thought, already thought about it, but it works. Okay, one more question from uh, Big Luscious here. I just had a question. If you buy a nuke and you get it, say, 1st of April, mm -hmm. and say you're in your general area of the country down there in Georgia, right? how many times should you be able to split that nuke uh, by the end of the season? How many, how many, if you're just going to build out nukes from a nuke, how many nukes should you be able to get by the end of the year if it's a, a good average year? That depends on the beekeeper. I mean, you could talk to 10 different beekeepers. I would take the original. We, what we do is we put 100 to 200 packages in five frame boxes to show a student. You can put a packaging, turn around in 10 days and sell it. Now, you can take that package, put in there and that nuke, and you can basically pyramid it out. Three splits every 10 days. But you're going to have to have supporting hives. So... By supporting hives, you need to run eight frame or 10 frame. And when you make that split, you take a frame, shake the uh, bees off the frame and put just a frame of hatching brood to boost it. Now, you can split all the way up into the end of, you know, September easily here. And there's lots of ways to do beekeeping. I got uh, one of my uh, students in the next town over here is Wade Dale. He's been on the chats here. He's a preacher. You know, you can... When he gets on here or he's on Facebook, you can ask him. He bought packages three years ago and two pound packages putting nukes. He averaged three to six gallons of honey that season. Plus he split those packages in boxes once he got them built up. He split them three times that first year. So 
the amount you can split or the amount you can do is going to be based on your experience and what you have to work with. You got laying queens, you can go faster. If you got queen cells, ripe queen cells that you can either cut or graft, if you can run 200 grafted cells that's ready to hatch within 24 hours, you could basically split with a frame of bees. But you're going to have to have, you know, feed. Forget the honey business. Concentrate on feeding those bees year-round. We make more bees. If you're going to make honey, once you get them build up, take them to a place, make honey on them. Yeah, I don't want honey. I want to make bees. That's There's that's no limit. The sky's the limit, and your limitations are going to be your boxes. I mean, okay. every one of my students that's been here will tell you, that's what I preach. You're not going to build boxes fast enough. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, that's all of them. That's it. Okay. Appreciate Tom uh, moderating tonight and keeping everybody under control here tonight. <laughs> and everybody, welcome. To, and thanks for showing up. And we'll see you in two weeks. So get your questions ready. And we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks.